Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of tea, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about an OP's very smart and talented friend who's in a wheelchair, and a woman who is sure this girl doesn't deserve to be where she was. Please subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. This happened about a few months back. I'm adopted from Korea and speak some Korean, but I understand it more than speaking. Understanding yes, I cannot exactly speak it back very well. It is enough for some people to understand me. So, for background knowledge, I had a Korean exchange student at school, so I decided to take him out to a nice diner in town. The exchange student said that he had not tried much American food yet, so I thought it would be a good idea to take him to an American diner. Man was I wrong. Past. Me, KS. Korean exchange student, W. Waiter, G. Greater Cedar, EM. Entitled Mother, K. EM's precious baby. KS had not taken much transport in America but a taxi, so I took him on a bus. This is located near Washington, D.C. Me and KS take the bus down to the closest bus stop to the diner and go to the diner. We enter and get seated. Great seats and all. KS's English was not that great, so I had to use improper grammar to talk to him. Me. What food you want? In Korean, hamburger. I hear it is very delicious. I nod my head and the waiter comes over. May I take your orders? I would like a hamburger with cheddar cheese, onion, lettuce, and bacon. Okay, and how would you like that cooked? Medium well. What would you like? Hamburger with cheese, tomato, lettuce, and onion. He would like a hamburger with cheese, lettuce, and onion. How would you like it cooked? Same as him, points to me. He wants it medium well as well. Drinks. Coke. Choco milkshake. In Korean choco means chocolate. I will go put your orders in. Takes menus EM and K enter. Hello. I want to be seated with my child everyone is staring at her now. G was seating someone. G goes to their post. Time AI. It took you long enough. Seat me and my child. Now. Would you like a high top table or AI want to be seated? Okay. G gives EM and K a booth. They seem happy, so everyone goes back to eating. W takes their orders and then brings our food out. KS, food good. S, so good. I think I want to eat another one. Finish first, maybe one more. I finished my plate. KS eats more and says. In Korean, I don't know how you eat hamburgers and fries so quickly. I eat a lot of hamburgers. EM seemed to hear an unknown language and so she decided to come to our table. Excuse me, but this, pointing a KS, person is not speaking English. Make him speak English. He doesn't speak good English. What do you mean he doesn't speak English? He is from Korea. He does not live here. He is an exchange student and only wants to try American food. Tell idiot, points to EM, English stuff. You're idiot. I know speak English good. I from Korea. EM looked shocked and put her hand over her mouth. You don't talk to me that way. Do you know who I am? KS looks very confused. She asks who she is. KS nods and says. Yes. You're an idiot. I'm trying not to burst out into laughter. K comes over and asks what's wrong. Don't worry sweetie. I will make him speak proper English. No more Korean. What? I think Korean is cool. Don't make him stop please. This is America. People should only speak English. See, now probably if you look further back into your ancestry, you will find that you are not just American and that you are probably a little Spanish. EM is shocked. How dare you talk to me like that? Do you know who I am? Yeah. An entitled person. Now go sit down. Shut up lady. I try and eat. Go back to China. Yu Ching Chong's both probably belong there. EM grabs K by the arm and goes back to her table. W comes back after EM and K go back to their table. Was she bothering you? Yes. She was telling my friend not to speak his native language. Okay. I was watching, but didn't know if she was your family friend or something. Sorry that I did not intervene. I ask for the bill. She gets our bill, and I look at it. She put a 20% discount on the bill. She also apologized again for not intervening and for any inconveniences. Poor waiter. Probably has to deal with this bullcrap all the time. I pay and me and KS leave. On our way out we hear from EM. You better be going back to China. Ice might be coming after you soon. Me and KS just ignored her from then on. 
We don't know what happened from there on. OP and KS dealt with that woman like geniuses. I don't get it when people demand such crazy stuff from other people. Maybe she thinks you cannot travel to another country until you learn the language of that country you are going to travel to. So I work for a sanitation company and clean outhouses for a living. 99% of what I do is service units in the nearby mines, and so I rarely interact with people, and since honey wagons are often loaded to the rim with crap, people don't exactly approach my truck. It always throws me off when someone walks up to me while I'm cleaning an outhouse. Now, occasionally I do some in-town stuff, but usually just deliveries. Seldomly do I go en route in town. One day though, I'm asked to deliver some units to a sports field. And I go around setting them up, getting them ready and making them all pretty and crap for whatever is going on, baseball game apparently. I get a call from my boss asking if I can hang out a bit because they need an extra truck for another project and he wants me to hang out for someone to show up and lead me to the location. While I'm waiting, this happens. Past. Me, obviously, entitled mom, EM, S, supervisor, C, customer. Yes S, I'll hang out for a couple hours. What all is? Excuse me sir, can you move that outhouse? Hang on S, someone's asking me something. What's wrong ma'am? The outhouse is in the way. Nothing is supposed to be an eyesight for the kids. I just set them up where I was told to. I can't just. Oh I won't tell anyone. How hard can it be to move a couple of units? I don't think you understand, those each weigh 500 pounds. Oh I can recruit some help. We just need them moved before we start the game. Let me call my supervisor and see what he says. Tell her no. That's not our problem, the customer told us to put them where we did. Oh this just has to be a huge mistake. Let me call C, somewhat heated argument over the phone, I don't know what they were saying. He said to move them. After spending 30 minutes moving the units. Hey why are you moving the units? I thought you approved it. No, who told you that? That lady over there. Of course she did. Go ahead and put those units back so they don't get run over, I'll have a word with her. Another comical argument from afar I didn't get to hear. About an hour later. Hey I just got a call from C. The units you set up got hit by a truck. Where did you put them? Me. Against the fence. How did they? They were on the road. The C said he told you to move them back against the fence. I did. Some soccer mom tricked me, and then I had to put them back and. Blonde with leather jacket. This has happened before hasn't it? I'll call the C and see if we can find out what happened, you promise you put the units against the fence. After that, I got word from the supervisor that the soccer mom apparently got some guys to help drag the movements into the road, where they promptly got run over. And then tried to throw us under the bus and tell the customer I just got lazy and didn't want to move them. But fortunately those units all have probes in them so we can track them, and so we know the units got magically moved after I drove away. I hope she had to pay for them, and I hope it wasn't cheap. She needs to learn a lesson from what she did. Because if she won't, she could do much worse things in future. So, for some backstory, my friend, I'll just call her Giselle, is disabled. She is in a wheelchair and can't talk or move much. She has a machine that she can talk through so she can communicate. She is super smart and has an insanely good memory and she made it on a team at school, it was just a team for smart people that did competitions. I don't know what to call it. To get in the team you had to do a test, and if you got over 90%, then you moved on to the next test, where all the people that did well on the first test competed, and the best 14 people made it onto the third part, where the lowest scoring two people don't make it to the team. They were very hard. Only 12 people could make it on the team. I tried to get on the team, and I got to the third part, and so did Giselle. It was this mean girl who, we'll just call Dub, standing for dumb unempathetic idiot, also made to the third part. She was always super mean to Giselle and made fun of her and mocked her and refused to get near her. It came to the day we all did the test to see the two people that wouldn't make it on the team. The two people that didn't make it were Dub and a random boy I didn't know. The day after that, we were spending the extra hour at school doing competitions and learning new things. About halfway into the hour, Dub and her mom, EM, comes in, both looking furious. The second Giselle and I see them we both know crap is about to go down. Our teacher, who we'll call Mr. Person, immediately unwelcomed them, knowing that they were going to argue to try and get on the team, and said, may I help you? 
EM says, yes, my daughter, Dub, didn't make it to the team, and she should be on it. Mr. Person calmly says, ma'am, your daughter didn't make it on the team. She can try again next year. This team is for the best of the best. The EM comes back with, Dub is the best of the best, I bet she deserves to be on the team. Mr. Person sighs, and then I notice EM notices Giselle, and is glaring at her. Mr. Person says silent, not knowing what to say, and then EM breaks the silence with, look at that girl. She's in a wheelchair, and she needs a machine to do anything. She should be off of the team, and Dub should take her place. She can't be on the team. I scoot my chair over to get closer to Giselle to comfort her. Then Mr. Person explodes, furious that this mom would be so rude to Giselle and say she is disabled and can't be on the team because she wants her daughter on the team. Do you really think that because someone simply has a little bit of trouble doing things physically that makes them automatically stupid? She was bored with that and she is still incredibly smart, how dare you think that? This is idiotic and so are you. Giselle starts grinning. EM screams, everyone in here is stupid especially you and that girl. Screw you. She then stomps out of the room. Everyone is taken aback by that, and Mr. Person is furious for swearing at a bunch of little kids, simply because they made it on the team, and that he and Giselle should rot in hell. Giselle's smile turns into a frown, which turns into a sob. We all try and help comfort her, and after a little bit she calms down. By the end of this, the hour is over and we all go home. I occasionally see Dub, and whenever I do, she always gives me the most intense death glare she can, same with Giselle and all the other team members. This was a couple of months ago. I'm so sorry for Giselle, she doesn't deserve to be treated like that. This woman said so many cruel things, but what if her kid was in Giselle's place? Why don't people think of that? She really thinks her family is the center of the universe. Backstory was on a plane back from vacation, my mom and I were sat in a row of three and had a spare seat. EM wanted me to swap with her so she could get two seats to herself while, and I would sit with her husband and kid. Cast. EM. Curly hair, big but not obese, that special type of I'm on a cheap flight, but I'm better than all of you idiot. Mom. My mom. Me. F.A. Flight attendant. So, we were in the air, the seatbelt sign was off, and we are free to roam about. The flight had a couple spare seats from what I could see, including the one next to me. My mom and I had booked the middle and window seat, but I moved to sit in the aisle so we would have more space. The woman sat in front, EM, continuously whipped her head round to stare at me for a few seconds. I tried to ignore her, but it was freaking weird. After 20 minutes of her turning round to stare at me every few seconds, she eventually tapped me on the head. She tapped me on my head by reaching over the seat. Excuse me, her tone was very severe, yes. Hi. I was very tired and tried but tried to be polite. Swap seats with me. She maintained eye contact the whole time. I took a few minutes to respond because I was just dumbfounded. I'm with my mom I'd rather not you've got a spare seat, I want spread out and relax, swap with me. No, please leave me alone. That's not how you speak to an adult. She got a little loud, enough to turn heads and disturb my mom, who asked if I was okay. Swap with me, I need to sit there and you can sit next to my child. You can play with him. The child looked around 5. I am 18. Please leave. Move right now. This turned everyone's head, made me so embarrassed and was loud enough to summon a flight attendant. Mid-30s male. Is everything alright here? He spoke directly to EM, completely ignoring me. That boy won't move. He's got two seats to himself and he. My mom interjected loudly at this point. I actually have two seats to myself. Both of which I paid for. I was sitting in the aisle seat, which we had not booked. The EM didn't respond to my mom, I think she was intimidated. Hmm well I'll see what I can do. He then turned to me. Me, who had been listening and presenting the whole time. This woman is asking if you'd be able to swap with her so she could have more space, would you mind? Would I mind? No, I don't want to swap. EM erupted. She started yelling at me, calling me an idiot, calling me selfish. My mom was yelling at her back and I honestly was struggling not to laugh at EM because I noticed how her chin shook as she shouted. The FAA during this argument shrinked away, just backed off and left. EM, realizing she was making a fool of herself. Fine. Selfish idiot. 
She sat back down and swung her seat back as much as she could, which was fine because it was literally a couple inches and I had plenty of space. My mom asked if I was okay and if I wanted her to make the EM move. I said I was fine. EM started making huffing noises. I ignored her, put in my earphones, and the rest of the flight was fine. When we landed, EM made sure to get up like a rocket and block the walkway so I couldn't get out the aisle. I however was feeling petty. I stood up, shuffled over and said you don't mind do you? Then barged into the walkway in a way that looked accidental. She stumbled into someone else who promptly launched her back into her seat. It was hilarious, like watching a ping pong ball. She didn't move after that and we got off the plane and never saw her again. Why would anyone agree to do that? She's crazy if she thinks any stranger would give up their extra seat and want to play with her kid so she can relax. I wonder what she would have done if someone came to her with the same request. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about an EP's kid who stole OP's bike and got injured, so EP now demands OP to pay for medical bills. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.